Welcome to DIY Flashback! Back when I was making Episode 6 of Gothic Homemaking, Wardrobe of the Damned Part 2, I believe it was called, we had two very big problems at the Lair of Voltaire. Well, besides that, and those are still true. <laughs> we didn't have a table on which to serve a meal. Plus, we also desperately needed storage space to help hide some of our clutter. I came up with a solution that addressed both problems, and it was called the Mystical Vanishing Chest and Summoning Table. Take a look. It all starts with a storage ottoman. Now these storage ottomans tend to have a hard wooden top and soft leather at sides. And this is what they're for. Say you have a friend who needs a hiding place, well, you can just throw them right on in there, and it'll be out of sight. But furthermore, you can grab yourself a chair, and pull it up, and you've got yourself a table. Now the first thing that was going to have to go was this brown tabletop. So I got some sandpaper, and I sanded off the varnish. Next, I grabbed some Krylon Black Lacquer Spray Paint. I masked off the parts that I didn't want to paint, and I painted the rest with black lacquer. Next, it was off to Home Depot, where I bought a piece of 1 8 inch wood. This piece of wood would become the tabletop. I used some cut tacks to nail the wood to the top of the ottoman. Now previously, when we were at the Gothic Renaissance store in New York, I saw these mystical spirit boards. I had an idea for what to do with them, but I wasn't sure if they were the right size. They did turn out to be too big, but that is what rulers and knives are for. I placed the spirit boards on top of the tabletop. And I marked where they ended. I painted the center using a high-gloss black enamel paint. Next, with my Champstick Industrial Glue Gun, I laid down a nice layer of hot glue. And I laid down the spirit board. And then I did the same on the other side. Now you notice the leatherette part of this ottoman is very plain, but all of the other furniture in the lair has upholstery tacks. So I went to a hardware store and I picked up some upholstery tacks. Now I have never done this before, but in time I figured out a strategy so that they would be evenly spaced. Now you'll notice the feet on the ottoman are very boxy and modern, but all of the legs on the rest of the furniture in the lair are very, very ornate. So it was back to Home Depot where I bought these ornate furniture legs. Unfortunately, they're completely unfinished and all of the other furniture in the lair is black lacquered. So to make them match, I painted them with alternating coats of Krylon lacquer and clear brushing lacquer. Next, it was time to remove the feet from the ottoman. And with a drill, I made a hole that was slightly smaller than the bit sticking out of the chair legs. I cut away the cloth to expose the wood. On a piece of cardboard, I mixed some DevCon 5-Minute Epoxy, and I spread it onto the top of the chair leg. And then I simply screwed it into place. Now, I was going for an occult motif, so I went to Zazzle.com and I bought a print of my favorite goat-headed god, that Lord of Balance, Mr. Slash Ms. Baphomet. Now, I know goat-headed gods aren't for everybody, but that's the beauty of art projects. You could put absolutely anything at all in that spot. To attach the print, I used everybody's favorite decoupage goo, Mod Podge. With a brush, I laid down a nice liberal coat.
While it was still wet, I laid my print onto the Mod Podge, and then I smoothed it out, making sure to get all of the wrinkles and bubbles out. Once the Mod Podge was dry, I laid another coat on top of the print. I would eventually do four more coats. Next it was time to shellac the Ouija boards. I laid four coats of clear brushing lacquer on top of those. And when I was done I had an icy slick finish. It was like the ice skating rink of the damned. For the sides I chose an Illuminati all-seeing eye car decal and I applied it the same way you would onto a car window. Now remember those casket handles that were too small? Well, they were the perfect size for the mystical vanishing chest. Now, the haunted library table from several episodes ago had an ornate frame for a top. In order to keep with that theme, I took a walk down to an East Village framing store called Excel Custom Framing. They had a huge selection but as I would find, all of the best stuff was hidden behind these moving walls. The staff was really accommodating and they let me rummage around the store until I found a frame that I liked. I gave them the dimensions, they gave me a price, and one hour later I had this amazing custom frame. Once again I grabbed my Krylon black lacquer and I painted it black. With my industrial glue gun, I laid a bead of glue all the way around the perimeter of the tabletop. And I laid my frame in place. I wasn't sure hot glue was going to hold it, so I drilled some screws into the corners. To hide them, I went to Toho Shoji in Manhattan, and from their enormous bead collection, I found these little gems that I glued onto the screws to hide them. And that's it! the mystical vanishing chest and summoning table. Years later, the mystical vanishing chest continues to serve us here at the Lara Voltaire. Sometimes we raise the top and we serve a meal on it. You may be seeing more of that in an episode called Gothic Play Settings. And other times we hide our clutter in it because it is, after all, a vanishing chest. Right, Orville? 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 Get out of my chest, fool!